All right. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining me here on the Red Pill Investor Podcast, as well as Sell More Homes Now on YouTube. Today, we've got a great day scheduled of prospecting and getting out there and setting some appointments with some expired listings and some canceled listings, as well as some for sale by owners. We're going to do a little bit of cold calling around uh, the areas for for sale by owners and properties that we can invest in. Uh, If you're listening to us on the podcast, thank you so much for joining me here on the podcast from iTunes. I really would appreciate it if you'd do me a favor and leave me a a five star. Well, just give me an honest rating. Whatever you think is a fair rating of the podcast, I'd really appreciate it because it means the world to me. Also, if you've had a chance, I would appreciate it if you would go over to YouTube and check out my channel at Sell More Homes Now. Uh, where you'll find the live presentation of what's going on here. Then, uh, of course, I would encourage you to subscribe to both channels so you'll get notifications of all the trainings, of all the thoughts, of all the teachings, all the different things that I've got coming out as it relates to real estate. Uh, I've got a lot of really good news today. If you had a, a Memorial Day, I hope you had a great Memorial Day because trust me, the news that I'm about to share with you is going to be life-changing just like Memorial Day has been for our country. I'm going to tell you right now, this is some life-changing news. What we're going to cover today, we're going to cover uh, Scottsdale-based True Realty completed its first blockchain transaction uh, in December. This is uh, back here in December of 2018. If you're trying to get some perspective, I'm going to put these stories in perspective for you so that you can see how this has progressed here in Arizona and what this will ultimately mean to an investor, to a realtor, to somebody who is a realtor and an investor, what this ultimately means to you especially if you're in Arizona, and then ultimately what it's going to mean to you in the in the nation. So uh, the first uh, story we will cover here in just a few moments will be this story about a blockchain transaction for real estate that was completed in Scottsdale. The next story we're going to cover uh, will be uh, PropTech. Uh, if you're not familiar with PropTech, PropTech is a new thing that you're wanting. Well, it's not really a new thing, but it's something you're going to want to definitely be on the lookout for. PropTech is um, a nice way to uh, put uh, a conglomeration, if you will, a bunch of companies who are looking to disrupt the real estate game. If you're a realtor, if you're a real estate investor, well, then you know that there's going to be some changes coming. And PropTech is a conglomeration of companies that are intended to do that. And here in Arizona, they've got a couple changes that they've made. And the final story we will cover has been causing a lot of realtors grief here in Arizona has been this uh, this uh, t- Governor Doug Ducey recently uh, attended the Arizona Tech Innovation Summit. Uh, 2019 and signed House Bill 2673, uh, which is actually the property technology sandbox. Uh, So that allows businesses to test uh, technology here in Arizona. I'm going to go over what that means for you as a practitioner, as well as an investor in just a few moments. In the meantime, between time, of course, we will definitely go ahead and call expired listings. We're going to go ahead and call all the people that we said we would do. I've got my phone right now on Do Not Disturb. So let's go ahead, get over to the dialer and get started. So I'm going to press one and four, eight, and the number, and press that. Okay, got that on speakerphone. All right, we've got it all good to go. Okay, everything is set. Let's go ahead, whoops, turn that around, get started prospecting. As we always do, let's take this to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we just ask that you'd bless this day as you have every day. Lord, you've blessed us with a a great country. You've blessed us with many opportunities. You've blessed us with great people to work with. Lord, I just ask that you'd bless the people who listen to this, that you'd open their ears, that they might hear something that would be new to them, that they could help their communities, open their eyes, that they might see something, that they might learn, that they would help their friends and families. Lord, I'd help that you'd bless the people that are going to take this phone call today, that you'd help my mouth to to say the right things, Lord, to to speak to them. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, guys, let's go ahead and get cracking. So press start. Boom. Now, so first off, we're starting with the expireds, and then uh, 
as you know, if this is your first time joining us, can well welcome. I, I'm glad that you're here. If if you're uh, have you been here before, welcome back. Thank you for joining me. Uh, as you know, I've got this thing rolling in the background, and pretty soon you'll hear a ding if a, if a homeowner picks up the phone, and then we will go ahead and talk with them. And in the meantime, what we'll do is we will go ahead and discuss some of the news of the day. So that in mind, let's go ahead and get started with our first news story. Like we talked about, uh, this comes to us from the Chamber News Review, or Chamber News. This when is, your call has been forwarded to an automatic... This is, um, this is from the uh, Chamber, the Scottsdale Chamber of Congress, essentially. Uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> Chamber of uh, Commerce, I should say. Uh, the, the headline reads, Scottsdale-based True Realty completes first blockchain transaction. <laughs> Hello? Hello? No answer on that one. Okay. Um, said that uh, blockchain, is, you know, obviously the technology that links blocks of data together through cryptography has been making a surge in recent years, showing up in everything from financial tech to scientific data. And Arizona is having a blockchain surge of its own, opening the door to startups and data science companies through a series of workshops and the country's first fintech sandbox. Now, a Scottsdale-based real estate agency is grabbing the quote, brass ring of the blockchain by recording its first ever transaction using the technology. Now, when you think about it, uh, that's the first paragraph from their story. And what this essentially means for you and I as practitioners is, hello? That's not what I want. That's not going to work at all. All right. Sorry about that, guys. Sorry, I had to listen to that one. Uh, essentially, what this means is if you've been in the game like I have, you can see that things change over time. You can see how financing has changed. You can see how recordation has changed. You can see how a lot of things within your contracts, contracts themselves, the, the, the way they've changed over the years, you know, from being more seller-centric to more of a buyer-centric contract. You can see how things change over years, and this is another change that's coming to the market that I think is something that is inevitable. You know, if there's anything that you can do to shorten the, the, the time span of a closing, anything you can do to increase the security of a transaction, anything you can do to minimize the risk of fraud, you know, companies are, Hello. are willing no to do this. Available. And they're willing to do this because this is an opportunity for them to save a lot of money. I mean, anytime you can cut costs and increase security and shorten the period of time it takes for you to get your closings, that's just a win for everybody. So let's take a look at what happened. So True Realty apparently is a full service realty, real estate agency, just announced the sale. This is back in December, uh, made it, making it only the third realty company in the entire country to have completed a real estate transaction utilizing blockchain. Now, True did it, they said, by utilizing a tech platform called Propy, which increased the security and speed of the transaction. Now, I'd like to add that this Propy website is not something new. This is something that they've been working on for a while. I've seen this around myself. It's P-R-O-P-Y. And this is what's the platform that is enabling these people to go ahead and start doing this. The, I'm just going to go ahead and read, continue reading. It says, blockchain has been showing up in a number of different industries, and the real estate has been primed for some point to get in on it. The overall process of buying a home is still laborious, so bringing in a technology that creates a streamlined solution is highly desired. Exactly. If you've been in real estate for more than 10 minutes, you recognize how important this is because one of the biggest problems I think that we have as realtors is the span of time it takes for you to close. Once you get a property under contract, from the time you get the parties to agree to the time you ultimately get it to close and record, 
Let's say you're in a regular residential real estate transaction. If it's a regular residential real estate transaction, that's 30 days or maybe 45 days or so. And every day that it takes, every longer day that it takes, is the increased chance that something negative is going to happen that's going to prevent your sale. I mean, call it Murphy's Law, call it what you will, but what whatever the case may be, the fact remains that the longer it takes for things to close, the more obstacles can and do get in the way. People go out and buy things. People have uh, all sorts of unsuspecting things happen in their life. And so if you're able to go ahead and speed this process up from the actual approval of the loan to get the money to them, to actual recordation, to move it to the seller's hands, the less opportunity there is for negative things to happen and interrupt it. They wrote down, this is an actual quote from uh, from Sarah Richardson. God bless her heart. She's the principal designated broker at True. She uh, she gave a, uh, a quote to them and, and shout out to her for, for, for doing this. She said, we see it. We see it as a safer and faster and more efficient way of doing business. It's not disrupting our process. It was so easy, it was scary, she said. It was easier than uploading a listing on Zillow. Oh my goodness. Could you imagine? Could you imagine being able to close a transaction out easier than uploading photographs and descriptions and whatnot on Zillow. Hello? Hello? I mean, if you think about it, as a realtor, that might give you a little bit of pause. You might be thinking to yourself, great, this is awesome, because now... Hello? Oh, hi, this is Carl. How are you today? Fine, thank you. And you, what can uh, I help yes, you Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm doing well. I'm not sure if I have the right person. Are you, uh, are you the fellows, uh, the Pelican Properties, the owners of that property on 29th? Uh, let me give you Christian just a second. Okay. I have a feeling we're going to get Christian's voicemail. Hello. Hi, Christian. Yep. Oh, hi, Christian. This is Carl Krenzel. How are you today? Good. How are you? I'm better than I deserve. Thank you. Uh, I'm not sure if I have the right person, so I apologize. Are you the fellow who happens to own that property on 29th Street? Oh, okay, cool. All right, I I noticed I'm a, I'm a I'm a broker myself here in town. I noticed it came up as an expired list. Are you guys going to relist that? What's the story with that? Yeah, yeah, we're putting we're putting the next back up there tomorrow. Okay, yeah, I saw you guys build that property. That's a nice little property you got there. Is that the only one they have? You guys got more? I said, have you guys got more than that one? That's a nice place. Um, right now, that's our only property listed, and then uh, we're listing another, um, just another renovated in, in Sarita. So, okay. Uh, as of right now, that's all we got. Okay, right on, right on. Okay, cool. Well, I appreciate you taking the time and taking my call, okay? Yeah, of course. All right, brother. Have a great day. Thanks. Uh-huh. See ya. Bye-bye. All right, so we were just going to go ahead and delete that whole... Hmm, let's just delete this whole thing here. Yeah, we'll delete that. Boom. Okay, there we go. Let's see. All right, so um, there we go. As I was saying, perfect. As I was saying, as a real estate agent, you know, you might... <laughs> You might look at this and take cause or take pause to yourself and say, well, gosh, if this was so easy, they could just simply close this easier than going to Zillow. Well, oh, my goodness. Hi, Pat. This is Carl Krenzel. How are you today? I'm 
okay. How are you? I'm better than I deserve. Thank you. Um, I'll be very brief. I'm not sure. Are you still the owner of that property on Glowing Star? Yes, I am. Wonderful. I noticed that the property went off the market the other day. I was actually just – I'm a broker here in town. I was just calling to see if you still wanted to sell it. Do you? Um, well, I think, wasn't there something on the listing about not to call because there's somebody terminally ill? My husband's in hospice right now. Oh my gosh. I'm so and, sorry. Um, I didn't notice the listing. So, okay. Well, gosh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, well, please accept so my condolences. I, you have I a great day. It. Thank you. Right, mm-hmm, bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right. So put that down. Is not interested. Good deal. All right. Yeah, gosh, I'm sorry to hear about her husband, but no, it it doesn't show up in my dialer. That's the thing. The remarks, you know, a lot of times people will say, well, gosh, you know, maybe we should go through these remarks and read them. Mm-mm. No, I don't believe that at all. I think, I mean, sometimes it has some value, uh, but more often than not, you know, it is more valuable to get to them quickly and then go back and potentially read them if you need to, because it is extremely rare that you'll have a situation like that where somebody will say, well, gosh, you know, my husband's in hospice and blah, 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 blah. Or, you know, my mom just died or blah, 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 blah. It's very rare that that happens. I would say that that probably happens one out of every 500, 600, maybe 800 times. Like, <laughs> I mean, I've been with you guys on all these phone calls that we've been doing. I don't think we've had that one come up just yet. So, uh, in any event, getting back to getting back to this uh, this uh, this issue of of blockchain, you know, uh, one of the benefits when you think about it is that that you can go from especially from an international transaction. You know, we've got a world nowadays that is global in nature, and people buy properties, and I'm not sure where you are. Okay, uh, it's certainly true that it's probably not going to be somebody from, you know, Dubai who's going to buy a hundred and fifty, hundred sixty thousand dollar property here in Tucson. It's probably not going to happen. However, you know, it could be very likely that someone from Dubai with millions of dollars, you know, could be looking to buy a property here in Arizona or Tucson or somewhere along the lines that's in the millions of dollars. And if that's the case. Uh, it could be very difficult sometimes for you to prove certain, I don't know, certain things, right? I mean, our banking regulations, if you're going to buy property, uh, if you're going to get a loan, unless you're going to pay cash or something, and even cash, there's <laughs> regulations about what you can do. There's, there's what I guess I'm trying to say is there's difficulties in transporting large amounts of cash overseas and there's large uh, uh, a problem wiring cash, and there's uh, time that's involved. Sometimes, if you're getting a loan, if, especially if you're an overseas person, or uh, here in, in in the states, if it's your if you're distant from Arizona, let's say, it can be very difficult if you're an international client from Mexico, Canada, overseas, you know, who, who's trying to buy property. Because the regulations just take so long to prove and verify money. However, in a blockchain scenario, things that would take weeks to do to verify where the money came from and who had what and where this was and source everything, that that ordinarily would take weeks. But now it just takes hours by using blockchain technology. And this presents an incredible value to people. Another value is, 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 is fraud or data breaches because you're able to, uh, the, the blocks themselves are essentially 100% secure. I mean, you're able to encrypt them. You're able to chain them and lock them to where only the buyer and the seller and, you know, authorized persons can get the data. But the encryption And the status of it, the way it's built, makes it very difficult for someone to commit a fraud or change it without everybody else knowing. Now, obviously, blockchain is certainly not ready at this point to take on the hundreds and thousands and millions of transactions that are being done 
in the United States at this point in May 28th, 2019, the day after Memorial Day. It's certainly unlikely that that is going to happen in the next 30 days. But it does mean that there's going to come a time pretty soon in the very near future, once they get the technology straight. I mean, you remember the initial computers, how big they were and bulky and you had to, they had to have fans to cool them off, maybe a tape deck to put the data in. My very first computer was a TRS-80. Now, none of you probably remember what that is, but that was a computer where it was extremely old. It was made by Radio Shack, and to get the program in, if you want to play Pac-Man or something like that, you had a tape deck with a cassette tape, and you had to put it in there and press play, and it would put the data in a in a, in a a kind of format into the computer itself, and it would learn the, the program, and you could play your game. And thinking, that was just, you know, gosh. Hi there. Okay, you reached Sue. I'm unavailable. Okay. It was probably 1981, 80, I'd say when I got that. Yeah. And here it is 2019, you know, and we've got computers that are more powerful in the palm of my hand than our, than the, than the computer I had on the desktop. And, and if in, in a short period, you're going to find it's the same. <laughs> I'm not in, but I believe your name and a number and a message. I'll try and get It's going to be the same scenario with blockchain. Blockchain right now is a little, eh, kind of, you know, hard to work with. Not everybody knows how to get, but it will be soon and very soon where blockchain will be something that you're going to be working with. Now, as a realtor, as an investor, I don't think it's going to be a situation where that's going to interrupt. Hello? Please leave your message for Five. I don't think it's going to be a situation where you're going to uh, get edged out of this. If you're a realtor or an investor, I don't think you're going to get edged out of this at all. Blockchain, I don't believe, uh, causes a threat to you in your business. I don't think that's the case at all. If anything, I think what it does is going to provide a faster, more secure, easier method for you to get your closings, which is ultimately going to help your customers get what they want, which is the money. And if you're an investor out there, if you're a broker out there, uh, this technology is certainly going to be very helpful to you. So let's go ahead and see where we are here so far. We're still dialing pretty good. We've made, uh, let's see, we have 46 calls that we've made. We've made three contacts. Uh, let's see. None of them. I think we're any good. Drop seven voicemails. Let's see. Okay. So that's where we're at so far. Well, that's dialing and let's go ahead and see. Hello. Oh, that one went to the no answer. All right. So let's move on to the next story. Very briefly. The next story that I'd like to cover with you today, uh, as I mentioned, is this issue of property tech right? This property technology issue. So, you know, as a realtor, as a broker, as a, as a person who's in the real estate business, you know, you're always on the lookout for some of the latest and greatest, trying to figure out where the market's going and how this can affect you and your customers. That's what you're trying to do, right? Well, in Arizona, there's two things that are always, <laughs> are always happening. One of them is technology. Technology in Arizona, it goes hand in hand. We have, you know, Raytheon here. We've got, you know, you know, U of A here, the science park. We've got science technology has been a big factor here for Arizona for many, many years. Uh, housing in Arizona has also been another big thing. And the reason why is clear because housing in Arizona uh, is quite honestly one of the fastest things growing because people move here from all over, from California, from Washington, from Oregon, from the East Coast. You know, they all come here for our weather and for good reason. I would too. I mean, good gracious, if it's snowing where you are, why, why would you want, why would you want to live in that? That's not much fun at all. So uh, what we're going to do right now is switch over to the Mittman edition here where I like to call this a little area. And we're going to leave out, let's see, the ones that I've already called. I'm going to leave those out. All right. Okay, here we go. And we're 
we're dialing again. Okay, good deal. So in our last story, we talked about how in December, just you know, five, six months ago, there was a transaction that was first done here in Arizona up in Scottsdale with True Realty about blockchain and that it was the first time something had been done in Arizona using blockchain. Fast forward a month, now it's January 2019. This article comes to us again from the Chamber of Commerce News. And they said that the that property tech is the big, I'm sorry, the next big tech boom in Arizona. This is the Chamber's business news section. Uh, they wrote down uh, that, that one way real estate and technology are coming together is through property tech, which is really a buzzy new piece of innovation in the real estate space, right? This is what Nick Esquer from uh, from the, the Chamber of Commerce writes. He said, prop tech is a, a small part of a wider digital, digital overhaul in the property industry. Okay. He, he puts it much like how Uber, Lyft, and Bird scooters changed the transportation sector or how Grubhub and Uber Eats changed the way we order food. Well, I certainly agree with Nick there. I mean, there, there has been a lot of changes in the way that we transport people. There's been extraordinary amounts of change in the way that we eat and order food. And I would agree that real estate is ripe for uh, this, this change as well. However, I do think there's a couple things that need to be changed. I mean, you know, property, prop tech is the innovative tech side of real estate, he says, considering the technological and mentality change of the real estate industry and looking at the attitudes, movements, and transactions of its consumers. He writes, it is, quote, an amalgam for all the companies that are taking the real estate industry to make it a better user experience. It's still a new trend, but one that fits in with the changing world of real estate that we're experiencing here in Arizona. Now, I agree with him 100%. Part of the problem, I think, that we've experienced over time, if you follow my podcast at theredpillinvestor.com or on Sell More Homes Now, you'll even see it in my sales strategy over time and how I've kind of matured and evolved over time. You'll see that as late as 10, 15 years ago, you know, people were not really able to go on the internet, you know, 20 years, they were not really able to go on the internet, check things out. I mean, when I first started in real estate, the MLS was in a book. It wasn't on the computer. I still remember the day that they, <laughs> they put in the teletype machine in the office in my company at real estate, uh, was it, agent-owned realty in Charleston, South Carolina, or Somerville, South Carolina, you know, back in 1996, I remember when they put the, the teletype machine in there so they could burn Hello. out. Hello. Hey, this is Carl Krenzel. How are you? Ah. Let's see here. So I remember when they put that in and, <laughs> you know, it's not, always, voice it's not always been this, this case where people people have had instant access to the multiple listing service. It's just a recent phenomenon. And when I say recent, 10, 15 years, that people have had instant access to the multiple listing service and instant access to the information that used to be held, you know, pretty close to the vest by realtors. It used to be back in the day when I first started, realtors didn't tell you much unless you started paying. They didn't give out information and it's still common in offices to this day where realtors are reluctant to give out information because they feel as though they're giving up power or influence or information, you know, some kind of ability to control something. You and I both know that regardless of the way we feel about the market has changed, changing, it's already changed. You know, you could be a realtor like myself with 20, 30 years experience and say to yourself, well, gosh, I'm not really crazy about the way things are changed. I, I like the way I used to call people on the phone and, and make appointments and, and be able to get for sale by owners and expireds and, and whatnot. And nowadays, it's difficult for me to get all these appointments. I understand. Believe you me. But that doesn't neglect the fact that the market is and has changed. 
And you have a choice as a realtor, as an investor, to either come into this and, and work through the changes and make them beneficial to you and your client, or you can fight the change and go down just like everybody else. I mean, it's just not realistic. Now, look, I, I, I first heard about this, you know, I'll be honest, uh, not, 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 not that long ago. I don't want to sit there in front like I'm the guy who knows everything because it's not like I've been watching this material for years myself. But, you know, this, this, uh, this, this concept is not new. This, this property tech, you know, boom, if you will, is coming, this trend is coming from this financial tech overhaul that's been going on here in Arizona as well. This has been going on for a while. I mean, in, in Arizona, the financial tech sandbox bill that was passed you know, a while back allowed financial companies to come into Arizona and test out apps and programs and things that would help consumers and see if they could use Arizona as a test ground to find ways to help the financial customers get a better deal. And they're using things like block, you know, blockchain and allowing it to be used, you know, being able legislatively to allow people to do these sorts of transactions and to experiment and to work and, and minimize Legis, you know, minimize legislative uh, legislative inter interference is good for an economy. It's good for an industry. It's good for people to be able to do this. But there are realtors and investors and people in the market right now who are in the real estate industry who are saying, gosh, I don't want this to happen because this is going to tear apart my business. It's not going to tear apart your business. It's, it's, it's nonsense to think that you're going to, your business is going to be torn apart. If you're, if you're older in the business, if you've been around a while, let's say that you've been established for 5, 10, 15 years, the fact that some company comes in with a new way to find a property or a new way to get information or maybe a, an offer pad type app that allows people to buy properties directly to offer pad or so what, well, that's not going to kill your business. People are not just going to stop calling you. That's ridiculous. People don't, people don't call or use apps like offer pad, offer pad or five, anything two, like that. Zero, five, four, mm -hmm. eight, three, seven, one, eight. It, uh, they don't use things like offer pad because they distrust or dislike you. They use OfferPad because they don't hear from you. That's the biggest problem right there. You know, as a real estate investor or real estate um, a realtor or a realtor who invests, okay, you should not be afraid. The call has been forwarded to an automated voice messaging system. Hang on just a second. Erica Kurz. All right. Is not you should not be uh, afraid of these things that are coming to you. Now, look, many of you uh, may be outside of Arizona. If you're watching or listening to this on the podcast, you might be thinking to yourself, well, gosh, you know, this property tech uh, stuff that's going on in Arizona doesn't really affect me. <laughs> well, it, remember that OfferPad started here. Uh, they, they, got the, they got the rights to begin all that stuff here. And, and, and when you think about it, okay, if it's, if it's successful in Arizona, then they start trying to figure out ways that they can use this in other areas. If they can use it in other areas, then coming to Florida, coming to Texas, coming to California, coming to a, a realty area near you. You know, OfferPad is the best example. OfferPad began in Phoenix primarily because of this ability for the financial tech, you know, sector to go ahead and start to work in that area. And now, of course, we'll lead into the final story, which brought us to this first this first, uh, this first problem in the beginning was, was, was Doug Ducey, the Governor Ducey, attending 2019's Arizona Tech Innovation Summit, um, which brought together business leaders, representatives from companies driving innovation in Arizona. During the summit, Governor, uh, Governor Ducey signed legislation creating a regulatory sandbox for property technology companies in Arizona. Well, well, well. What do you know? This is from uh, Arizona Big Media. 
you know, shout out to them for covering this. You know, I, I know many of the realtors in my community are concerned. Call has been forwarded to an automatic voice message system. Yeah, just a second. Very Many of the people in my community, many of the realtors in my community are somewhat concerned about this because they feel the that, gosh, this is going to be just like Uber. System. This is going to be, you know, Uber's going to take over like a, like real estate. You're going to have people like Zillow coming in and making offers and buying homes. And, and then you're going to have OfferPad coming in and buying homes. And, and then you're going to have all you have reached the voicemail box of five. You're going to have all these horror stories, things that are going to happen to realtors and investors and whatnot here in Arizona. If you listen to some realtors, you know, you'd, you'd, you'd be, cons you'd be concerned that, that, that Armageddon was coming. You'd think that the end of the world was here because to hear brand new realtors and realtors or investors who don't have a lot of experience, who've not really been through a bad market or competition in any serious way they think this is the end of the world and and look i'm not complaining i'm not you know i'm not making fun of you don't get me wrong look everybody has their own thing i, I get it when the do not call list first came out i remember pulling my hair out thinking that was the end of my business but i'm here to tell you that you've got some encouraging news don't worry let me tell you let me explain why let me let me go through this article a little bit with you. It says, House Bill 2673, HB 2673, sponsored by Arizona State Representative Jeff Winnegar, establishes a, quote, property technology sandbox for businesses to test innovative products or services in the real estate industry. Here's the notable point, right? By, quote, reducing costly barriers to entry. Hmm. Hmm. By reducing costly barriers to entry. Hmm. The bill promotes the, quote, development of disruptive technologies affecting the transfer and management of both commercial and residential property. Hmm. Sounds suspicious to me. When you think about it, HB 2673 does two things. Reduce costly barriers to entry and promotes disruptive technologies affecting the transfer and management of commercial and residential property. Reducing the cost of entry, meaning more people can come in and disrupt, right? Disrupt the technologies affecting the transfer and management of both commercial and residential property. Governor Ducey went on to say, you know, God bless his heart, he went on to say, PropTech is changing the way we rent, sell, buy, develop, and manage property. I agree. PropTech, you know, these companies, these, 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 uh, this trend, if you will, absolutely, 100%, I agree with him, is changing the way we rent, sell, buy, develop, and manage your property. I mean, when you think about it, nowadays, when you want to go find a rental property, do you call your rental agent? Probably not. If you want to go find a rental property, you might do you go to the paper? No. <laughs> if you want to find a rental property, if you want to rent a property, you go on the internet. Hello. Good morning. This is Carl Krenzel. How are you today? Carl, please stop calling me. Well, I'm not sure if I have the right person, so I apologize. Are you the lady who owns a home on Rosewood? I am, and I don't want to talk to you again. No worries. I didn't realize I ever talked to you. Did you did you want cash for your home? I just wanted to buy it. Hmm. Well, that's okay. I'll take that as a no. All right. Let's see here. Let's see here. Do do do. All right. Not interested. Take that as a no. All right. All right. Okay. All right, cool. So property tech is definitely changing. And when you think about it, if you want to buy a property, remember how it used to be? It used to be that you, you know, go to a realtor and the realtor would show you property and he would tell you, he or she would tell you how much it was worth and, and, and what kind of repairs you needed to get and who was a good person to fix the roof and what you needed, you know, blah, blah, blah. 
All those things now you can find online. With the introduction of blockchain, it used to be that you needed a notary. You had to go to a title company. You had to have a bunch of documents FedExed everywhere here and there. <laughs> what if you don't need to do that anymore? What if, just a what if here. You know, I, I know a lot of realtors, a lot of investors, a lot of people probably getting upset saying, well, gosh, you know, you're selling, <laughs> you're selling out. What the hell are you thinking? This is going to be the end of our business. What if, just a big what if, what if it actually turns out that they take the shackles of legislation away from this, 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 this environment? They, they legislate it to a certain degree, of course, for safety, but, you know, they make it to where, yeah, you know what? <laughs> Hey, Krista, uh, this is Carl. I think I have the wrong number. I'm actually looking for the Daney residence. They own some property on Hawthorne. Is that yours? Oh, no. Oh, gosh. I, got I, the... I have a house on Hawthorne. What are you looking oh, for? Oh, okay. Well, uh, my name's Carl Krenzel. I'm a broker here in town. I was just calling to see if you'd ever considered selling that property. Have you? Uh, oh, no, uh-uh, not on Hawthorne, no. <laughs> yeah, I can't blame you. That's a great little area. The only reason why I was asking is I was looking to personally buy something in that area. Um, do you happen to know of anybody else who might consider an all-cash offer on their property closing in the next 30 to 60 days? I do not, no. No worries. I appreciate you taking the time to think about it. And And one more time, have you considered selling your property at all? No. <laughs> no worries. All right. Well, listen, okay. I appreciate you taking Thank the time you. and you have a wonderful day. Okay. You, you too. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Okay. All right. Remember, you'll never push somebody too far um, by asking them for something three times. Right. Have you ever thought of selling yourself? That's going to be your reflex. No. 99.9% .9 of the time it's going to be no. Have you ever thought of, you know, of anybody else in the area? And then you qualify it a little bit and that gets them to thinking, oh, well, gosh, I didn't hear that. And then if they're, if they're thinking about it, sometimes they might, well, 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 well my house isn't, you know, quite this or that. Well, like I, I could close, but I couldn't close in 60 days. That's when you hear that from them. Or they might say, well, gosh, you know, we know of somebody else or, and then when you ask them the third time, well, have you, can have you considered it at? all right say it with a down swing in your voice have you can you know like, like if you could imagine your voice being level right and, and I, oh great no problem and i'm just curious have you ever considered you're selling your property at all you know make your voice go down right that intones a little bit more authority with people i think and it, it helps them you know understand that you're serious that you're not here just you know kicking tires that you want to go out and make some deals happen. And that's ultimately what you're here to do. You're, you're trying to find properties, people with, you know, there's a, a great guy. And if, if, if you guys are on Facebook or Instagram, you definitely want to check this guy out. You also want to check him out on my uh, podcast at redpillinvestor.com. The guy I uh, interviewed one time, his name is Nasser El Arabi, and he is a wonderful man. I love him to death. Definitely want to check him out. Hello. Oh, oh hi. Is this Pat? No path here. Oh my gosh. I'm so sorry. I might have the wrong number then. Do you, do you happen to have a, own a property over there on Hawthorne at all? Nope. Oh, geez. I'm sorry. All right. Well, listen, I'm sorry. <laughs> I hope you have a great day. All right. So we'll see. Boom. 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 Okay. And press now. Boom. Um, Nasser uh, El Arabi, he <laughs> he has a saying that I love. Uh, God bless his art. He says he says you want to treat it like like you're looking for sellers with headaches because I got a pocket full of Advil. <laughs> And I just love hearing my brother say that because it fills my heart with joy thinking about him walking down the street looking for sellers with headaches because he's got pockets full of Advil. And bless God, that's the way we got to look at 
our interstate, I'm sorry, our real estate business, we've got to think about, hey, I'm trying to find people who have problem properties because I've got solutions. And if you're in the real estate game, if you're a real estate agent who invests, then bless God, you've got all the technology, all the skills you need. And let's talk about this property tech issue and why you shouldn't be scared. Look, when I was first starting out, I remember I, oh God, I remember when they said the do not call list was coming out and, and I thought to myself, oh my goodness, that's going to be the end of my life. I'm never, because I'd made hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars, practically a million dollars by that time off the phone. And, you know, to, to think of me not calling anymore would be like a, a horse not running, like a dog not barking. It's just something in my soul. And when you're telling me that I can't call, that got my spirit riled up. And I can understand if you're a brand new agent and you see these people saying, well, gosh, here in Arizona, here across the country, we're going to start instituting blockchain. We're going to start instituting all these new changes. We're going to start having all these new problems and property tests. People can put their properties in the multiple listing service for next to nothing. They got all these discount commission brokerage companies and they got all these blah, blah, blahs. And all these, they're going to they're gonna make it super easy where people from another uh, another state can come in and list the property and they don't have to know your laws and they're going to screw the customer. I get it. I get it. Trust me. I understand how passionate we can get when we're trying to think about our business and our customers and the clients that we have to deal with on a daily basis. But I have to promise you that your passion is misdirected. You have to direct your passion in the right place. Okay. Listen, you have to remain calm. Okay. Your customers are looking to you to be an island. Of Hello. Hello. Your customers are looking to you to be an island of peace. Right? I mean, the world's going crazy around them, right? They pick up their telephones every day and it's feed of hate and, and miscontent and people are upset and 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 outraged and and triggered by this or that. And, and this is a culture of outrage. And 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 right now things are good. Believe believe it or not, things are good. Unemployment is down, rates are going you know, remain stable. The, the, the values are going up in most places, remaining a little bit stable, maybe coming down in others. But I mean, the, the, the market as a whole is doing good. People have a job and they're doing well. As a society, we're more healthy. We're living longer. More people are working. More people have money. Are there problems? Of course there's problems. But if people are complaining now, if you as a practitioner are complaining now, if you as a investor are complaining now when things are good, how positive, how good, how productive could you possibly be when the market goes down? And it will. It, 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 don't, fool, don't fool yourself. Don't sit here and be just like those people in 2005 and four and three and two and one and said, the market will never go down. Let's eat, drink, and be merry. You know, for tomorrow we die. This thing's just going to be great. It's never going to be that way. It's not going to be that way for long. And you have to. Hello, you've reached Kelly at 808 You have to be able to go ahead and see some of these things in a positive way. So let's, now that I've ranted for a minute, let's, let's, let's focus on what's positive about this. Okay, so in these three stories, what we've covered so far, all right, here in Arizona, we see that blockchain, you got the transaction comes through with blockchain, that deal gets done, lickety split, girl says, guess what? It was easier than uploading it to Zillow. This is a designated broker in that marketplace. This is a person who has the most to lose. And she's saying, ah, it was super yeah. easy. You reach the voice mailbox of Harold Andrew Kelt. She says, you know, I don't, I don't think you really need to worry about it because it just makes things faster and more efficient. I realized, quote, it could be the goal of reaching global listings. We're in a Phoenix market, but we're seeing major growth and further reach with blockchain. As I said, I would, you know, you got people in, you know, Dubai, you got people, you know, Canada, people in Mexico trying to buy property. It's difficult to transfer money. And then, you know, you see this 
this whole issue of property tech and people coming with companies and saying, gosh, you know, well, there's ways and things we can do to make your life easier, make your business faster, help your customers make their their goals achieve quicker. And if that makes things faster, well, then guess what? That means more money for you. It means more transactions. And guess what? Then the governor says, well, look, you know what? I'm going to take out a lot of these regulations and I'm going to make it possible for you to go ahead and start experimenting, start working so long as you protect the customer and make sure that... Hello. Hey there, this is Carl Krenzel. How are you today? M Mr. Kaplan? <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I might actually have the wrong number. I apologize. I was looking for the Caffleys. Uh, they own some property on Hawthorne. Is that your property, sir? Uh, where? Hawthorne. Hawthorne Street here in Tucson. Do you own a uh, home? No. no. Okay. No worries. Wrong number. All right. So they got the, the governor saying, you know, let's, let's make things a little easier for you to go ahead and, and, and get these transactions done. And then as an agent or an investor yourself, you say, well, gosh, this is going to be hard for me. No. And here's why, you know, Judy Lowe, the department of real estate head, she's the Arizona, uh, real estate commissioner. God bless her heart. She's got a difficult job. I don't envy her at all. You know, she's got to be able to go ahead and make sure that all these regulations and all these things in these sandbox, uh, technologies, all the, the blockchain, all the technologies are in congruence with Arizona revised statutes and laws. And as the department real estate commissioner, she is Ultimately, hey, hello, you have reached Jackie. I am unavailable to answer my call right now. She's ultimately busy. in charge of that and responsible for the protection and the welfare. Hey. Hi, you obviously got me at a time when I can't pick up the protection and the welfare of the Arizona citizen. And your state has a similar person where you are. No, they might not be called the real estate commissioner, but it's something along those lines. And their job is to go ahead and ensure that your governor's uh, policies are executed as far as it's concerned with real estate to the, to the team, especially when it comes to the legislature. Now, just because they have a sandbox technology, you know, or blockchain or new people coming out with new ways does not mean that you're going to be able to, you know, sideswipe or or overcome real estate law that's been established, you know, for nine to a hundred years. When you think about it, it's very difficult from a, a legislative piece to just overwhelm hundreds of, you know, laws and statutes and rules and regulations. Of course, you could do it, but it would cause immense trouble to the community that, or the, the, the industry that you did it to. And that's not what happened here. All that really happened here was Doug Ducey saying, yeah, now what we tried with the financial sandbox that worked, we're going to do the same thing with the property tech. We're going to allow people to go ahead and have access to things that maybe they didn't have access to for without a price. Maybe they were going to have access to things at a reduced rate. Well, maybe you're going to have more people be able to, you know, provide these services. I guess what I'm in time to tell you is don't be afraid. Even though the things change, what this really means for a broker, what this really means for an agent, what this really means for an investor is simply this. Your skills of interpretation, your skills of analysis, your skills of knowing the market. This um, is Marcy. Oh, hi, Marcy. This is Carl Krenzel. How are you today? Okay. Um, I, I have I, I'm gonna have to admit I owe you an apology. I, I think I have the wrong the wrong number. Uh, you uh, you oh, said your goodness, name was sorry. you said your name was Marcy. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I, I'm looking for uh, a Brenda. She happens to own a property on Third Street here in Tucson. Do you do you know anything about that property? I don't. Oh gosh, I'm sorry. Okay, well no worries. Well that's listen, okay. uh, yeah. Time. Since I got okay. you anyway, do you know yeah. anybody who's got an unwanted no, home I could okay. buy? No? All right. Thanks okay. So All right. Cool. Have you a great day. Sales call uh -huh. on this phone. Oh, it's bye. okay. It's no sales call. You have a great day. Thanks. All right. Cool. So, wrong number there. All right. Count it as a contact because I asked her if she knew anybody. Even if it's a wrong number, guys, you definitely want to ask them. Okay. So, what do you 
have a value for? What's the value of a realtor? What's the value of an investor? What's the value of an investing realtor? You know, guys, I, I have to be honest with you. My personal feeling is simply this. If you are a realtor, okay, and that's all you do, let's say all you do is list property. I really think you should take the moment to go ahead and increase your, what you serve, what you do, right? Um, you, don't be a one trick pony. You have reached the voicemail box of 5202702122. Don't be a, a one trick pony, right? Don't be a one trick pony. Because when you think about it, if you're just being a realtor, and you come across the deal where somebody's like, gosh, gosh, I don't want to list my home and, and their home is clearly not fit to be listed. It's a mess. Then maybe this is a good opportunity for you to learn how to do an assignment of contract. You know, not everybody's going to list. And as this market, you know, changes, you're going to need to know how to do different things. Now, take this one step further. Let's say you're already in. Hello? Good morning. This is Hello? Carl. Hi. Good morning. This is Carl Krenzel. How are you? Hi. Um, I'm not sure if I have the right person. I apologize. I, I was actually looking for Sandy. She owns a property over there on Fourth Street. Is that your property, ma'am? No. Oh gosh. Oh gosh. I'm so sorry. I got the wrong number. Then. Oh, well, listen. Since I got you anyway, do you know anybody who's got an unwanted property that I could buy for cash? No. <laughs> okay, no worries. It's kind of an odd Please question. Me from your call list. Oh, I don't have a call list, baby. I had the wrong number. You have a great day. All right. It's it's always funny to me. People say, remove me from your list as if I want to continue calling a wrong number. <laughs> That's okay. You, you can't blame them, though. They're just people. People being people. So as a realtor, okay, um, if you're an investor and a realtor, well, now you've got yourself two, two things that you can do, right? You, you, you can invest in the property, potentially buy it. You could potentially represent a buyer or a seller. So that's two avenues, yeah? Or maybe even three if you include wholesaling, you know, assignment of contract. Now, let's say that you want to, let's, let's say that everybody in your marketplace, it, it isn't currently, and you know it. I mean, right now, I mean, if you look in your market, there's probably one, two, three, four, maybe five realtors, unless you're in a really big market, that are actually wholesaling or investing or buying property, turn around and flip it. There's, there's a handful of realtors that do it. Not all the realtors in your marketplace are doing it. But let's suppose that all of them one day woke up and decided, you know what? We're going to start investing as well. We're going to make... Uh, we're going to make wholesaling and, and assignment of contract. We're going to be uh, investing and flipping lease land, you know, wholesaling lease options, I mean, whatever it is, esoteric kind of investing that you want to talk about. Let's just decide that all the realtors in your marketplace decided that, you know what, they're going to do it too. Holy cow. Holy cow. I mean, on the one hand, you got the, the, the sandbox stuff. So now you got Zillow on your turf. You got offer pad, you know, knocking on your client's door, you got all kinds of problems because now your buyers are getting scooped up by Zillow and, you know, they're getting sold their information to a to an agent that is paying for their information. And then where are you going to get your leads? Where are you going to find your value? How do you differentiate yourself in that kind of environment? Now you got a pickle. As an investing realtor, you know, it's not all that hard to discover five years from now. If this is 2019, and let's say that this uh, market continues on an upward or at least stable trend for another five years, five years from now, if, 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 if it's almost impossible to contact somebody by phone, and you have to reach them by text. And even text is hard to do because text don't, is, is so passe. It's Now it's on to Snapchat or some other kind of thing. I don't even know <laughs> five years from now. Well, then how are you going to reach your client? How are you going to reach your people? How are you going to talk to them? How are you going to prevent your center of influence from going on the internet? And let's say that they're in USAA and uh, they get a, a referral agent, referral company, and they save some of their money on the commission when they sell their property. 
Yeah, how are you going to compete with that? Look, I'm not trying to be a, a, a Debbie Downer here. I'm not trying to be the person who who makes you feel bad, but I'm I'm trying to ask you some serious questions. And if if you're listening to this podcast or if you've watched this video long enough, then I think you've entitled yourself to know a couple of the hard facts that are you're going to face. It's it's critically important that you understand the market you're about to go in. You have to be prepared. And you have to know how are you going to generate business? How are you going to generate leads? How are people going to contact you in the market to come? I mean, should Jesus tarry five years, what are you going to do five years from now to generate leads? I mean, I, I seriously suspect that five years from now, April, let's say it was May 28th, 2024, so it'd be five years from now, it will be impossible for me to call people on the phone like I am right now. This show itself might have evolved where people call me. I don't, <laughs> I have no idea. But what I do know is that it's going to be highly unlikely that we're going to be making outbound calls to people other than for sale by owners, perhaps an expired or two. But other than that, that, that even that might be an, an iffy proposition that you're going to reach them. So how are you going to find business? Now, now that you've answered, answer, answered the question at least somewhat, or at least posed the question in your brain, what you're going to do to generate business. Hello? Hello? Oh, hi there. I didn't even hear you. My name's Carl. How are you today? I'm good, thank you. What can I do for you? Well, I, I'm, I'm afraid I owe you an apology. I think I might have the wrong number. I was looking for the Bradys. Uh, they own some property over there on 4th Street. Is that yours? Yes, it is. Oh, okay, perfect. Well, listen, uh, my name again is Carl Krenzel. I'm a broker here in town who buys property. I was actually just calling to see if you folks had ever considered selling your home. Have you? No, not at this time. <laughs> I can't say that I blame you. That's a super popular area right there. It's really nice. Well, uh, real quick, do you happen to know of anybody else in that area who would be open to an all-cash offer closing in the next 30, 60 days? There's several signs around the neighborhood. I'm sure you could contact those buyers. Oh, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, I could. I, I'm actually looking for something that's maybe not currently on the market. Yeah, maybe save a save a little for me and the seller. So no worries. What's and, your offer on the property? Well, I don't know. I've not seen your property. Have you considered selling it? At what, at what price would you consider being a seller? Right now, I'm looking at about 275 Hmm. Okay. What kind of improvements have you done to your property, if any? Uh, not really any, but it's a great location. It's a good layout, and I think that's current value in the neighborhood. Okay. Well, I'm just wondering. I mean, I'm, I'm not arguing with you. Don't misunderstand. Uh, I, I'm just kind of taking a quick look at the Zestimate thing. You know how crazy those things are. It says that it's 221 for your property, and I, I, I buy properties in that area pretty frequently. I'm curious. Uh, 275 ha, ha, did you add another bath at all, or it's still, still one bath, right? No, it's uh, one and three quarters. And uh, that's where the house right behind me sold for over three fifty. See, there we go. But I do realize that's, that would have that... a pool, and I don't. Oh, that's why. Okay, see, the the, the Zillow folks only have you as a one bath. And so that certainly makes a well, difference. Okay, very cool. All right, so you're saying 275 I, I might consider it. I don't know okay. if that, you know, it's one of those. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's no uh, set in stone. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, I don't mind. Uh, why don't I come out and take a quick look at your property, see what it has to offer. And while I'm there, I'll tell you what somebody might, you know, might offer on your property. Would something like that help you? No, not at this time. Uh -uh. Oh, I see. So I other properties. Thanks. Oh, have, you're looking to get some offers on your other properties as well? Uh, the other one would be a commercial building on 4th Avenue. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, I wouldn't really be interested in that. All right. Well, listen, Christine, I appreciate your time. I hope you have a great day, okay? Thank you. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. So, this particular one is uh, not... Not uh, a particularly, uh, delete that one, good. So uh, it's not particularly a good uh, 
property. I'm sorry, a person, I think, in the sense that her, I, I just didn't get the feeling as, as though she was particularly motivated. So no worries. In any event, um, now that you've answered your question, well, how are you going to generate business? You have to ask yourself, okay, how are you going to provide value to these people? Because acquiring the lead is not the whole problem. Hello. Hey, this is Carl Krenzel. How are you today? I'm sorry, who's this? Oh, I'm sorry. My name is Carl, Carl Krenzel. How are you? Yeah. Good, good. Thank you. Um, I'm not sure if I have the right person. I apologize. Are you the fellow who happens to own those uh, those little rental over the over there on Rosewood, the little property? Uh, you must have the wrong number. Gosh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Gosh, that happens a lot. I apologize. Well, hey, uh, since I got you anyway, do you know anybody who's got an unwanted home that I could buy for cash? <laughs> no worries. I it's kind of an odd question. So, okay, cool. Well, listen, I appreciate your time. I hope you have a great day. Okay. You too. Thank uh -huh. you very much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Okay. So let's see. Wrong number. Remove that. Count that as a contact and begin. Okay. So now that you found it, because as I said, lead generation is not your problem. I mean, you could look, there's, ton, there's tons of ways for you to find buyers and sellers. Your problem is not that. Okay. You can go hold open houses. You can run an ad in Craigslist. You can buy them off the internet. You can, you know, prospect on the telephone. You can do it. You can knock on doors. There's tons of ways that you can generate a lead. Somebody who's looking to buy or sell real estate. That is not your problem. That's easy. Your problem is being able to convert that lead into a transaction, right? Uh, let's just call a spade a spade. You don't have problems. You don't have problems generating leads. You have problems converting leads. So how are you going to convert a lead in an environment five years from now when everybody's property and technology thing is going on? What value proposition are you going to provide? In my mind, you need to be able to provide a value proposition of knowledge of the market, deep knowledge of the market, right? Because a computer and a stat and a statistic and all these things that they can get from public information and from the computer cannot tell you a lot of things. It can't tell you, for example, off-market properties. It could if the computer's taught what to say and what to look for. But typically, the computer's not going to be taught to, to look and say for that expired or canceled listings. You, on the other hello. hello? You, on the other hand, could do that. You, know, you, could, you could look for expired or canceled listings. If you're an investor, if you're a realtor who invests, that's a great place for you to find off-market property that you could do, do business with. You know, if even if you're a realtor trying to find properties for other people, you could certainly look at those that the computer Zillow expired, whatnot. They're not going to find that stuff. They're not looking for that. What about what about what other values that you could provide about off market properties? People who were saying, "Well, gosh, you know, I would consider selling my home at you know two seventy five, like that person just a couple minutes ago." You know, if, if it was a situation where they were serious, but, you know, there's a, you know, they're incapacitated, you know, that other person before, you know, their, their husband's in hospice, but they're still going to want to sell. That's information that you're going to want to know. And the only way you're going to know that is if you spent the time calling the people, prospecting, talking to people, getting in the marketplace to figure out what is happening in the marketplace. If you don't take the time to get in the marketplace and learn this, then you're not going to have anything of value to add. And why should they pay you X percent commission? I mean, really, why should anybody pay you commission at that point? There, five, 10 years down the line, I can totally see how agents will be a salaried type commission, like a car salesperson, you know, to some degree. You know, they're going to be selling. Hi, you've reached Daniela Lopez. Please leave me hmm. all of your information, and I no, will be sure to get right back number. to you as soon as I possibly can. That's not even the right number. So, I mean, there, there's what some, some. Uh, I don't remember which which car joint it is, but there's one of these car joints out there that that you know their commission, their salespeople are not on commission. 
They're on. Uh, they're on. Reach the voicemail box. They're on straight, straight, straight salary. And I can foresee in a day where where a realtor would be the same way. And God forbid that day. God forbid the day when realtors become a salaried employee. You know, if you're a realtor who's asking for that, you want a salary, just get out of the business. Please, just get out of the business. Because if, 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 if all you're really trying to do is just the minimum to where you can just get a paycheck, then you're really doing the rest of us a disservice. You really are. You really ought to consider getting yourself in a position where you need to work in order to eat. Because then you're going to do the steps it takes for you to become great. Guys, listen, I appreciate you paying attention to me. It does not look like we've had a ton of contacts today. Uh, let's see <laughs> what we've had. Let's uh, go ahead and stop that. And let's go ahead and exit out of this. Uh, over the weekend, if you are listening, uh, over the weekend, I did go ahead and uh, work. I did go ahead and make a couple appointments. Uh, and so I'll let you know what happens with those. Let's see here. So, so far, we have, including today, all right, let's see. We made a total of 165 contacts uh, over the last few days this month. Uh, we've made six appointments. We've made uh, and taken one listing. Uh, let's see here. The daily average. Um, yeah, we talked to, let's see, calls made. We, okay, so today, 102 leads, 170 calls, 11 contacts. Ouch, that's not too good. 23 voicemails. And it took us an hour and 13 minutes to make 11 contacts. Ouch. That's no bueno, but uh, it's still 11 contacts, and that's uh, still good. Like an open house, if I had 11 people on an open house walk in, then uh, you know what? I wouldn't be crying. And even if all of them didn't buy, I'd still be glad that 11 people showed up. So anyway, guys, I hope that this was helpful to you. I hope that you liked this. If it was, please like. If uh, Christopher Torres writes, a con uh, writes in there, says, which platform am I using? Uh, in that, I am using the uh, Storm Dialer. I'm going to write that in there. Storm Dialer with Red X info there. So the Red X, uh, the Red X.com is uh, where I get the expired canceled information, the uh, information around listings and sales. And then, of course, I use their Storm Dialer to go ahead and complete that. Guys, I really, again, appreciate you. Thank you so much. And I hope you have a powerful sales day. Bye-bye.